When was the last time that you told somebody about something and what was it? Did you take three seconds to think about the last time you told somebody about something and what it was? Now, why do we tell people about the things that we tell other people about? It could be a joke, it could be a funny story, it could be a, a, a serious story, it could be something that you're going through in your life, it could be you telling somebody about something you're going through so that they can pray for you. But whatever it is, I would say that the reason we tell people things is because we see those things we are talking about to be important enough to share with somebody else. In John chapter four, we see Jesus encounter a woman at a well. And from this encounter, that this woman has with Jesus. She goes back to her town and she tells those people in her town everything that happened in her encounter with Jesus. And then those people come back to see who Jesus was for themselves. Now, as we're studying here, as we're looking at this text in John chapter four, I want to think about why this encounter was so transformative and life-changing for this woman to have the encounter and then go and share what she shared. Look at John chapter four, verse number seven. It says, a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink because the disciples had gone into town to buy food. And the woman began to ask Jesus a question. She said, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, give me a drink, you would ask him and he would give you living water. Sir, the woman said, you don't even have a bucket and the well is deep. So where do you get this living water? Oh my goodness. Go down to verse number 13. Jesus said, everyone who drinks from this water will get thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water that I will give him will never get thirsty again, ever. In fact, the water I give him will become a well of water, springing up within him for eternal life. Now, I wanna look at why this moment was so impactful for the woman to go back and tell as she did. Now, you notice right there in verse number nine, the woman says, how can it be that you, a Jew, is asking for a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. That's the first thing you need to know right there is that this encounter was not okay in the eyes of those who may have heard about it afterwards. The disciples thought it was odd. The Samaritan woman herself thought it was odd because Jews don't associate with Samaritans, as the woman said. I always think about it like Ohio State, Michigan. Now we, the Ohio State Buckeyes, are much greater than the Michigan Wolverines. So we don't associate with Michigan fans. Well, on a much deeper and a lot more serious and impactful level, Jews did not associate with Samaritans, and that was for many reasons. So this was a this was a racial barrier that Jesus Christ was breaking in this moment. It was a cultural barrier also that he was breaking because in this time that this woman was at the well, this was the time that the women in that town were to be going to the well to get their water because men and women didn't go at the same time. And we need to understand also that it was not culturally appropriate for a man to be speaking to a woman that he was not married to alone, okay? So there was a lot of things that were happening just by Jesus speaking to this woman and asking her for a drink. Now, I believe that Jesus wanted this woman to understand that in the kingdom of God, there were gonna be no cultural barriers. There are, there are gonna be no, no boundaries to God's love, no, no things to hinder you from receiving the love that God has for you. It won't be a, it won't be a color, it won't be an opinion, there won't be a, a, a theology, there won't be a, a political stance, nothing that will keep you from the love that God has for you. He wanted her to see that the kingdom of God is for everybody. He wanted her to see that he came to seek and save anybody who would believe on his name. That is what Jesus wanted the woman to see. And that is why the encounter was so transformative for this woman because what she did in that moment was she had a meeting with God Almighty in the flesh and he gave her all of who he was 
in that moment by just asking her for a drink. That's why this moment was so transformative for the woman. Now, now I want you to look at something that I, I believe is really cool. She said, you're asking me for a drink. You know you shouldn't be doing that. And Jesus said, honey bun, <laughs> if, if you knew who I was, you would ask me for a drink. He said, I need you to know that the water I can give you will quench your thirst for eternity. And she said, but sir, you don't even have a bucket and the well is deep. So where are you gonna get this living water? I believe today that God wants you to know, just like he wanted this woman to know in this moment, that the reason Jesus did not have a bucket at this well, because he wanted the woman to understand that she was the bucket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of y'all missed it. I said, the reason Jesus didn't have a bucket in this moment is because he wanted that woman to know that she was the bucket. What is a bucket? You put water and, and pine salt in a bucket. You fill the bucket up and then you pour the bucket out. Well, in this moment, this woman was filled up with the goodness, grace, love, mercy, kindness of Jesus Christ. And what happened? What happened? He filled her up and then she went back and she told everything that happened in the encounter. Look, look down here in verse number, I want you to look down here at verse number 39. It says, now many Samaritans from that town believed in Jesus because of what the woman said when she testified. Let me help you today. When you have an encounter with Jesus, when you spend time with him in his word and in prayer and in biblical community, when you spend time with God and you allow him to fill you up until you overflow, you will overflow naturally. Why? It's because you are a bucket. And it's up to you whether or not you'll decide to be a bucket. You have to allow God to fill you. And then you have to allow God to use you as you overflow. And when you do so, just like the people right here in verse number 39, People in your town, in your sphere of influence, in your city, in, in your household, in your job, uh, in, in your daily adventures, at Walmart, at Meijer, at Costco, at the gas station, will come and come to know Jesus Christ for themselves because you testify. So I just want to know today, will you be a bucket?